Welcome to part two of our Riverman Mermaid project. This is a comic book cover from a prompt we got from the last video. Let's dive on in. All right. So I've time lapsed this by a lot. I feel like I don't need to torture you with how long it takes for me to color something. But that being said, it does take a long time for most people to color, even digitally. And, well, as you can see why, this is, you know, a tedious process of coloring within the lines. But when there's a lot of lines, a lot of movement, a lot of elements in the foreground and background, it is in your best interests to start big and then go small. Now, in this case, we are separating the... Uh, the main background from the main foreground. And uh, we're using just basic colors that are very distinct from each other, as you may have seen in my previous videos. And, you know, there is a very big reason why you want to do this. And I would highly recommend that you keep certain uh, steps of this process as a separate layer. So when you want to address just the background, you can go to that layer, select it, and then you can, you know, go to town for the background. That includes adding tone and values and, you know, different types of, you know, filters and washes, etc. You know, to convey the mood or other things. So, you know, once you start to block this out properly, the paint tool allows you just to, you know, drop a color in and fill it really quickly. So, although it might be tedious at first, the idea is it becomes less tedious as you go in terms of this stage of drawing in the lines. So, I do apologize also in advance just because, you know, because it's time lapse, there's going to be a lot of jumping around back and forth and, you know, there's even steps where I, you know, I was debating to cut it out, but I think it's important for, you know, other artists or just viewers to understand that you could make mistakes, even if they take a good chunk of that process and you go, oh, dang, why did I do all this? Um, because, you know, so much of what we do as artists is based in some type of insecure area. Like, oh, I, I don't want to mess up. Or, oh, I don't want to, you know, spend all this time to find out, oh, I did it wrong. You know? It's very frustrating to do that. You know? And I sympathize. Okay? But I've also found that as I just, you know, bite the bullet, take risks, and learn from my mistakes... I make fewer mistakes as I go and the more efficient I get, the more tricks I learn. And, you know, I also have found that on occasion I'll pick up tricks from other pros along the way. You know, this can be a rabbit hole guys. You know, I'm not saying don't study other artists. Be careful though, because in our information age, it is so prolific and there are so many different ways to, you know, skin a cat if you will right like and don't get me wrong I, I do not even know half of all the best techniques out there you know I, I find the guys I resonate with the artists that speak to my process or the problems I'm looking to address but you know I could easily spend hours just scrolling through different videos different pros different perspectives and once again you know if you have the time go for it i don't so it helps to be selective when you are solving problems including you know the problem of how do i learn to be a better artist how do i learn to be a more efficient professional artist there's going to be a lot of different philosophies and tips tricks ideas and that's great but you know, some of the best stuff you're going to learn isn't from another artist. It's going to come from your own experience. 
and going, wow, that sucked, or wow, that was brilliant, or wow, I, I did not see that coming, or that was interesting, and this is going to inform my process even better. You know, why do I go into this so much? It's because I am literally doing that with every drawing I do. I feel like there's something I'm pushing. In this case, I don't like to spend a lot of time coloring. I don't like having to focus on all these different elements and making it mesh. Because one, I don't feel like I'm that good at it. And two, it's just a lot of time. Like for me, I think that's why I resonate more with an inker. Because once I put down the lines, I feel like it's done. I can pass it on. I've done my extent of what I enjoy. I've told the story. I've conveyed the emotion, the action. What more do you want out of me, right? No, it's, I want, I also enjoy, I should say, okay, letting other artists take it from there and seeing what they do. So there's a lot of internal like lag and hesitation, even internal fighting in myself, like don't color it, you know? But in this case, I thought, let's go all the way. Let's take what you've learned and apply it. You know, flaws and all, stupid process mistakes and all. It's it's valuable. Okay, so as you can tell, we're starting to make some selections now on what color schemes we're doing. So um, I've made other layers since, you know, that very first layer and I'm, you know, being more selective and, and this is not by any stretch of the imagination, the most efficient way to do things. Okay. But I have found sometimes like if I want to do a certain element or a certain type of technique, it's okay to make an extra layer on top of that and then merge it later. Okay. But in this case, this is that step that I was kind of alluding to about maybe making more work for myself. This is me experimenting. Okay. Uh, wanted the mermaid to have like a trout or, you know, a river fish feel. So I pulled something from the internet of like a rainbow trout. And it's definitely informing how this character is. And... I sometimes forget that how how valuable the coloring step can be in the storytelling because you can convey a lot through color and fleshing out what is between the lines you know uh in this case you know the mermaid is slimy she's you know she's definitely not a warm inviting character right if you look at her from the offset now that doesn't really matter because her focus is on luring Riverman. And Riverman is captured under her spell and doesn't see the imminent danger that she poses. Right? It's kind of like, dude, bro, don't do it. Right? And he's just like, what? It's, they, you know, it's part of the fun. So, unfortunately, as I experimented, I was like, that's a lot of shading, a lot of experimentation. I'm not going to do all that. That's just too much. And, you know, if I do too much detail on the mermaid, I got to carry that out. And, you know, once again, that inner dialogue, that tug of war is like, ah, no, screw this. We're going to go a little simpler. And that's what I did. So we're now going to do a simpler version to start with because, you know, as I mentioned before, and I forgot about this along the way, as you could tell, you want to start more basic and then gradually get more detailed. And the idea is, as you take care of those larger chunks, the detail work, although it takes about the same amount of time, it is efficient enough because of your process that you don't have to go back and forth as much. Um, that's the idea. Doesn't mean that I follow it very well, I feel. I feel like there's a lot of stuff I'm not doing right. And, you know, this is part of that tedious process now where I'm going back to add, you know, details to the coloring now. And it's back to that coloring in the lines, but being selective because you can really get lost in the trees when it comes to 
that type of step, right? Like, oh, how much is too much detail? And once again, if you start with bigger chunks and work smaller while checking the overall look, as you go, you'll go, okay, this feels adequate, or this feels good, or this feels, it needs a little bit more. And, you know, the idea is as you do that, you're going to be more proficient. You're going to make smarter decisions from the get-go, which will inevitably save you more time. Okay. Is everyone following? Okay, great. Uh, we're adding more of the details now for the mermaid and now we're going to certain areas where I've haven't started like the uh, the drowning dude once again I got a little smarter this time and I, I broke it down into chunks separating hair skin eyes I'm not doing any real shading yet that's important right save yourself that stress and really start bigger work smaller and then add your shading on the at the very end. And it's going to save you so much more time and it'll be less of a headache. Starting to look pretty good, coming together. And as we're going, we're also becoming more selective with the color schemes and paying attention to how everything comes together. Okay. It's not something that I feel that proficient in yet. And a lot of it's stop and go, trial and error, but it's it's getting there, and I'm feeling pretty good where it's headed. And you know, I, I like it. I do. I do. I, I'm 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 starting to really just see this part start to mesh, and it's it's feeling pretty exciting. You know, I don't get to do as many comic book covers as I would like. Partly because I avoid them. <laughs> I, I, I feel like there's people that are so much more efficient and, you know, than I am in that process. But yeah, at this stage, I'm not exactly sure what the chronology of all of this is. But there is a certain part of the process where I've then done my dialogue balloon and the uh, text. I downloaded the font from the from online called Digital Strip, and I used Clip Studio Paint for you know their word balloons are pretty pretty decent, and I'm pretty sure there's a, you know professional letterers that have their own opinions, but it works, and you know it's the idea I really wanted to emphasize like no well this is a serious situation. And a little humor as well. Um, but yeah, at this stage, we're adding another layer for some shading. Okay, so we're focusing just on where we really want to add the shading. We're not worrying about colors just yet. We definitely want to convey that there are certain tones, you know, that separate the surface from underwater. So we'll see how well that came out. Yeah, the mermaid's looking pretty foreboding. And you're going to, you know, at this stage, we're going to just start kind of tackling the little details. And hopefully if I've done everything right, it shouldn't take too long. And it's going to start looking cohesive and put together and all that good stuff. You know, Riverman... I wanted him to look not necessarily white. I th I was actually thinking, let's make him a Native American, right? Or possibly Hispanic, but someone that is more native to that region of the West. You know, we're so used to seeing, you know, white dudes saving people. Well, <laughs> they're not the only ones, you know, wearing a uniform in our day to day. You know, there's plenty of cops and servicemen that and women that that they rock the uniform too and I love promoting representation wherever I can especially when it just makes sense like if it doesn't have to be a white dude let's 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 
try other places. Let's do other things. You know, I think it's fun. And, you know, you can think what you want or have your own ideas, but um, I could see Riverman being this, you know, and this is, once again, it informs the story. For someone that never heard of the character, they're going to look at this and go, okay, this is a clearly more olive-skinned or brown character. Maybe he's, a, 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 you know, Native American or he's Hispanic. And, you know, what if he's this uh, immigrant, maybe? He could be an immigrant that takes on this role or a Native American that is hearkening to his roots, uh, and, which involve a love of nature, you know? Um, it just it gets your brain going. And if I've done anything right with this piece... If anyone resonates with it, it hopefully conveys an intriguing premise and story that someone's going to pick up off the shelf and go, I, I'll check it out. I'll peruse, maybe read it, maybe even buy it, you know, and this is a totally made up comic, guys. OK, this is not going to be in publication anytime soon, but it, it's been a fun process to do. It's been a fun what if. And. You know, I don't do a lot of contests because of time, but I thought, what the heck, let's push myself. It's been a while since you've done something that's purely creative, out of your head, that isn't pegged to a deadline or a specific client, and just go for it. You know, we're at the final, links, final steps now where, you know, we're adding those final details of shading and technique, and I'm going back and forth looking at how it's all looking, and, you know... Here we go. This is the cover. Hope you guys had fun. I had fun. Please like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time.